congrats on making it to chapter four, taking a look at 4.1, where we start to segue into using graphs collectively. This is a really big chapter just on graphing, starting it with a pretty basic concept of using graphs to relate to quantities. So with this opening activity seen here, this is saying that the graphs below, in this example, relate the height of the water to the volume of the water in each container. Which graph goes with which container? Justify your reasoning. So we see three graphs. We three, see three containers here. So trying to match, ideally holding different volumes, meaning how much water you could fill in one of these is going to be different than how much water you would fill into the next container. So let's compare and contrast. This smaller one's only going to have so much height and so much volume. So I think that the best option in this case would be to say that this graph is going to correlate with the smallest container, which makes sense. So that's going to correlate with this one. And then if we look at the taller cylinder, we could say that this graph here goes pretty high and it is going to be able to carry a lot. So let's say that this is going to correlate most likely with this cylinder. We see that with the last graph, this kind of goes up with its height and then kind of tops out and kind of goes and it can hold a bit more volume, but we see that this is kind of the only option that we have left really. So it makes sense that this is going to be the container that has that little bit of a funnel at the top or more of a wider opening. So we've got that. So that's what we can say. Uh, as we continue with this, we'll see real world situations. We'll also be sketching out graphs of how we can compare and contrast two variables. Seen here, we compared volume with height. They were two different relationships and they were described accordingly using the graph. We'll see that with some other wordy situations. But it really comes down to reading these and understanding what's being asked of you or what's going on in this scenario. So reading the graph first is really important. As we see here, we're being asked to decide on what information we can determine from this graph at the right. So let's take a look at this. We have Trina's trip on the side. This is measuring the distance to the destination. And it's also measuring time. So the distance to the destination, ideally over time, you want to get closer and closer to wherever you're going. So we could say that as far as information we can determine from this graph, we can say that over time, Trina gets closer to her destination. We also see that there's a break period here where it goes kind of flat. So we could say also something to the effect of having a little bit of a break. You know, maybe there's a pit stop or Trina needs to rest. So there's a pit stop about halfway through. So notice pretty short, sweet, talks about the graph. The title tells us that this is a journey. This is happening over time. So this is a trip for Trina. The variables that we just talked about, the axes, we saw that the variable on the left was the distance to the destination. So we had that. And time was the other variable seen here on the bottom axis. What information does the shape of the graph tell you? Well, yeah, we kind of already talked about this. Ideally, as time goes on, the distance that it takes to go to the destination is smaller and smaller. She gets closer and closer, even if she does take that break. So that's what we can say. The variables and the labels differ because time keeps going. But as we see with the distance, this might not just continuously be going in this pace. So what do we say? The variables and the labels differ because time is a different increment in comparison to distance. Kind of like apples and oranges, they're not the same. We can also practice seeing what's up with these. So with this first graph seen here, 
we're being asked to decide on the situation, what variables are involved, and what does the shape of the graph tell us. So with this, we have variables on the bottom of time, and on the side, tiles installed. The shape shows us that over time with this tiling job, more tiles will be installed. So they might start small, they might take a break here, work pretty heavily, take a break, work heavily again. So the shape shows that over time, more tiles will be installed even if there is a break period. Which makes sense. Seen here, Dion's growth chart, ideally over time as Dion gets older and older and older, his height's going to grow up and up and up, but eventually level out. So the variables here are age and height. The shape shows that over time, Dion grows taller. Eventually, Dion stops growing, which is represented from this flat line up here at the top. So it goes flat, notice. Finally, for the ballers out there, we have variables of time and height. What do you think this shape is going to show? What's this showing? Looks like it starts at some height and goes up and then goes down. What do you think the shape shows? Think about this in a football sense. You could say that the shape shows the height of a football after being kicked at, I don't know, this is probably waist height. Yeah, it's going up into the air, but it's already in the air above ground. So you could say after being kicked at waist height, I guess you could think of this as a punt. As far as matching, we see that we have some dots here. This is different than what we just saw because this is just straight dots. So let's compare and contrast. We see that this first graph shows over a certain number of days, a number of tickets are sold, and this is moving up and up. So let's match this with something as far as the table that's going up and up. So day one, 35, day two, 45, we see that this is increasing. So we could say that this graph of C it's going to correlate to this graph, which makes sense. We see with this next graph that it's starting pretty high, but then going down, but then kicking back up again on the last day. So if we look at graph A, this kind of shows that, where it's starting at 60, 45, 40, but then jumps back to 75. So let's say that graph A is going to correlate with this. Ideally, leaving the final table, graph B, to correlate with this. Just by elimination, we can say that. As far as sketching these out, we've been reading these, we've been interpreting the variables, but sometimes we have to actually sketch out what we think is going to happen. So following the steps here, de determining the variables that we need, what could go on X, what could go on Y, what's dependent or independent, what's going to happen. Determine the type of graph. If it's just going to be an L with positive values, will there be negative values? Draw, label, provide a title. Lit title's already given to us, which is nice for these. Think of reasonable values that might occur and plot them. And if possible, connect the points if we need to. So the number of apples on a tree over one year, ideally, let's say that we start with, I don't know, let's start with a good amount. Let's say that we start pretty high up. And then I guess over time, this might just drop down. So maybe if we start this tall, we might go down, might go down again. We might keep the same amount, so it might just stay the same. Maybe we get one back over time growing. You know, but you're never going to see an apple tree without any apples. But it also depends on where you're at as far as the weather goes. So this has a variety of answers, actually. I guess it depends on the season. The amount of milk in your bowl as you eat. So ideally, if you're going to start with a bowl of cereal and you already have milk in it, it'll start somewhere, let's say, probably here. Then over time, it's probably going to go down. But this is a consistent 
drop down, so I think drawing a line for this might be the best bet. So we could say that it might start at some amount, but eventually over time you're not going to have any left. Distance from home plate as we round the bases playing baseball. So we could start and well, we start at home plate, so we could say that we kind of take this and we could potentially go up. So we start at home plate, so we'll start at the bottom. If we go to the first base, that means that we're here. We might go to the second base and be a little bit farther. But then as we start to segue back, we could easily just end up back at home plate. So over time, this just goes back home plate. Temperature on an oven, ideally if we start it, I don't know exactly what ovens are like when they are first working, but we could say that it's probably starting with some type of room temperature and then goes up. Eventually, once an oven's preheated and you're making this, it might just flatline. So over time, it's eventually just going to stay steady as we bake the cake. So lots going on here, a little wordy. Got to think out the context, but what's cool about this section is that lots of real world scenarios going on here with growth, variables, jobs, good stuff.